Hey guys, what's going on? Leo Pozzo here, Leo Pozzo TV. Thanks very much for tuning back in. I want to bring you guys a live update or it's actually not a live stream, but I'm recording it here live right now and I'm not going to be editing anything. I'm just going to post it as is. So I just want to give you guys a real time update. It's been approximately uh, 48 hours, give or take, since the initial overdosing that my kids did. Uh, they overdosed my 125 gallon reef tank here that's standing here behind me built into the wall and my uh, 35 gallon uh, coral call it slash frag tank and uh, they overdosed it with several several chemicals uh, from magnesium uh, alkalinity ph uh, coral revive uh, for an example like the coral dip um, iodine um, what else um, ph alkalinity they just literally dumped in pure full bottles and powder uh, additives that I normally manually dose and um, like they just they went into the back fish room they unlocked the door because it's in the room the the back all the fish tank stuff they unlocked it some my son and my daughter between the two of them they while I was sleeping open up the bottles and dump them in the tank in the sump tank and along with above on the top of the tank actually in the main display and all of those all my tanks are connected together my uh, 125 here and my 35 gallon that's behind the wall they're all connected underneath one uh, 75 gallon sump so it basically contaminated all the water if you know if you guys haven't watched the previous uh, videos I just kind of showed you guys what I did to uh, basically get my tank to where it is right now I'm still kind of monitoring everything obviously but I just wanted to give you guys like an update on what's going on 48 hours later. Uh, as, as soon as I found out uh, the overdosing was approximately like 8 hours uh, after it actually happened. As I was uh, initially sleeping when the overdose happened supposedly. And then from there I was working and then I got home. And then from there... Um, that's it, I came down to my tank, just a big friggin' huge mess. I ended up doing a 100 gallon water change as soon as I could as possible. I had no salt, I had to send the wife out to go and get salt. Um, what else? And then on top of it, I had no pre-made RO water because I just did a water change the other day and I didn't mix anymore or have any you know, extra and especially not that much, about 50% as I have 200 gallons in total you know, with all the water volume. So I did a 100 gallon water change as soon as I found out approximately 8 hours or 10 hours after the initial dosing and then I went uh, and I did another water change approximately another 12 hours later and um, I changed another 100 gallons. So again I did uh, you know 50%, 50% and then today I actually just went to go pick up myself another bucket of salt right here sitting on the ground. And as I already used a full bucket between the two water changes, and to be totally honest with you, I kind of actually ran out of salt during my last, uh, during, while I've already, you know, siphoned out a good portion of the water, that 100 gallons, and then when I was ready to fill the tank back up, I literally uh, used some RO water that I had prepared in advance, and also some tap water that, um, that you know to fill in the blanks for the rest of the, you know because my RO unit can only produce approximately 100 gallons a day and I did the water change about uh, you know 12 hours after the initial water change so anyways I just wanted to give you guys an update what's going on with the tank Leo Pozzo TV I appreciate all your support guys all your comments all your suggestions everyone that's been tuning in on the live streams uh, the live stream basically I just uh, they're three to four hours long there's two videos but this video right here is pretty much summing up the whole general situation and giving you an update approximately 48 hours uh, after the initial dosing so let's take a quick peek at the tank showing you what corals have survived and what has not So as you can see, my fish for the most part are all still alive. I don't uh, really see any of them that have passed away. So I'm very thankful for that as my fish are still alive. I'm going to take a closer look and show you more of the corals that have died. 
I'm still monitoring my fish very closely. They all look pretty okay considering. Um, let's take a look at the biggest pretty much damage I'm going to say is uh, my whole anemone section right here. If you pull up one of my previous videos, you'll notice right underneath this uh, drain here, I had like a bunch of anemones that were huge. There were like maybe four or five, six of them, give or take. They split a few times and that was basically, that was pretty much my tank. Uh, that was like the center focal point. And along with that, it, you know, going along to this encrusting red Montipora, which is now completely all white and you can see that it has been growing onto the back glass and uh, just to give you a perspective that piece alone is at least probably a good 12 inches by 12 inches give or take and uh, so that is a nice size fair size piece and again to the right of that all the anemones are gone uh, well I'll tell you the truth let's zoom in right here and show you the whatever's left there that's left of one of them it's kinda just shriveled up look looking like kinda hork like not uh, very healthy at all you know let me know what you guys think if I should uh, actually take this one out leave it in do you think it'll recover because it's basically just mounted on that rock I just gotta remove that whole rock right there and just take it out of the tank and I guess uh, just give up on the enemy's life right there uh, there is another one or two there was last night towards the back there I'm not sure if I can really find it right now I haven't really seen it to be honest with you yet um, I'm kind of checking out the tank with you guys at the same time. Um, also, this you know this red Monty here is pretty much not red anymore. It's, for the most part, it's all definitely bleached, and uh, it's pretty much on its way out. There's still a little bit of red left towards the bottom. This section right here is uh, is all white for sure. This part right here is all white for sure. This is all dead. This whole section, encrusting section over here. This is all dead here as well. What else? Uh, this whole overflow box here section is obviously not white anymore. It's it's all red or red. It's all white. This bottom piece right here, considering it's still actually in reasonable condition, uh, this red plating Montipora right here, encrusted all over this piece of live rock. It's a uh, not as white as the other ones it still does have some red and I'm definitely thinking this piece will recover right here which is approximately uh, give or take 10 inches give or take 10 by 10 we got these mushrooms here from uh, from the overdose and the whole time I had they haven't really shown any really side effect or much at all like they might be a little bit smaller than normal but they uh, haven't really closed up like I would have expected them to along with these mushrooms over here at the back you can see some more red Montipora back there that's uh, bleached out as well this anemone right here um, is actually surviving as well this one uh, used to be at least a good three to four inches and now it's looks like a three quarter inch to one inch piece anemone definitely shriveled up and found a little hole in the rock and uh, just mounted there. It used to rest up here. If you watched some of my previous videos, it was actually right there underneath the uh, the return line, stuck on the back glass. And uh, what else, man? The tang again, the Soho tang. No signs of any uh, ick or stress, really. To be honest with you, the fish are actually still hungry and eating. So I'm really uh, happy about that, you know, the fish are still making it. Let's make our way a little bit more towards the left side of the tank here. Uh, you can take a look at this uh, bird's nest right here. This bird's nest doesn't look like it uh, got affected at all for the most part. It looks exactly from what I remember. Well, I would say it's a little bit bleached a bit towards the bottom, but I'm sure it'll color, color up shortly. This bird's nest as well right beside it. Um, it's pretty much in the same condition as it was before. It's not really uh, bleaching much either. It's still reasonably in good condition. We got some uh, GSP here, green star polyps mounted on this rock, which is definitely closed up. Usually they would be open right now and be like a big carpet, but that's not happening. I'm very happy that this green uh, branching Montipora here is uh, still with me and it's actually still growing. Very impressed. Started off with the frag and I uh, can't wait for this guy to grow 
uh, this branching SPS right here as well it uh, looks like it's pretty much on its way out it's about uh, three to four inches and I only see like quarter inch pieces of the coral left that are still alive there those green spots um, if we look here to this other big section of uh, Montipora this is another good size section probably about uh, 10 inches or so eight inches and it's all like slime all over it there's like a nice huge haze of slime I should probably try to siphon this out there's some uh, serious purple red slime algae canyon bacteria algae I believe that's growing on this purp on this live rock right here that I didn't have before these anemones are these clownfish I'm really happy that they've uh, accommodated with this other anemone here and uh, hopefully trying to feel at home as best as possible I definitely need another one or two for these clownfish to host and that's what I had but they're all uh, it's all dead now they're in the middle for sure I think that's one of the locations that they actually drop partial of the chemicals in what else here we got this uh, Montipora over here it's uh, not so red it's still red but more on a pink side this stuff over here Montipora it's all pretty much white definitely on the pinker side back there same gig it's just look at that section there on the back glass man it's just uh, pretty much actually brown that section right there I don't know these Zoas are still making it they're still pulling through and that anemone is looking all right surprisingly this piece I'm very happy about too that it's still with me this green piece of Montipora right here it's plated on the back glass and uh, I think noticing looking at this video right here I should probably give that a little clean around the back glass there it's a little bit I did the front but uh, I didn't really do the back as I normally don't but uh, I think it might be a good idea to try to remove that build up of stuff of chemicals on the back glass well guys I just wanted to give you an update it's a little bit longer definitely than what I wanted to there's still more to show you guys I want to show you guys back in the sump and how it's going and uh, take a closer look at the frag tank and see how the corals are doing in there so uh, you know what Let's go ahead and do a quick little, hopefully a quick little view of the back of the sump filtration in the 35 gallon tank. See how that stuff is doing. All right, well here we are, the 35 gallon tank. It's tied into the uh, 125. We got a clean, or we got a golden head uh, sand sifting goby. That yellow guy right there, he's still with us. I think he feels that he's on camera. He's a little bit nervous. Got this Melanaris Ras, nice size right here. He's still okay with us. He's still making it. Very happy about that. This Kenya tree is definitely closed up. Um, this Ghani right here is definitely closed up. Hopefully it can come back in the next few days or week or so pipe organ is okay the zoas are okay they doesn't look like they're as affected some more mushrooms they're okay they're uh, used to be much bigger than that covering the whole piece of live rock but you wouldn't even be able to see the piece of live rock but these other green mushrooms yep they look like they're pretty good condition they're working okay some nice uh, pink orange zoas assorted zoas they're not really coming out that great on the camera coloration wise this uh, gorgeous brain right here purple and uh, green highlights and uh, blue as well this guy I'm very happy to make it I had a nice gorgeous red one right beside it that guy totally died this uh, beautiful donut coral right here it's uh, actually pretty puffy and happy right now actually you can see we got some more GSP like we had in the uh, display tank over there which are all definitely closed up as well so they're not too happy a 
these uh, blastel corals, orange, red, pink blastel kind of. Uh, they're um, they're definitely on their way out. Same with these green ones over here. They're just kind of making it. The elegance is uh, looking fantastic, actually. It's very open and extended. It was closed when I seen it a day or two ago when this all kind of happened. Everything was super cloudy. So, guys, it looks like everything is, you know, I told you pretty much some things are in, some things are out. But for the most part, all the fish are alive and the, some lost a few corals, I'm going to say, and a, a few anemones, some SPS. Here's a skimmer. Let me turn on this light here for you guys a little bit better. So here's a coral box skimmer. This has been set up now about 24 hours like this. Um, and it's initially it wasn't it was just bubbling up like crazy when I tried making it up uh, when I plugged it back in after the hundred gallon water change. Obviously there was just too much chemical still in the in the tank and it was just bubbling like crazy. But I just kept on running it and um, you know just kept on running it as low as I could at the setting as I want. I also uh, got the drain here. This is a drain from the skimmer and I just put it inside of a bucket and just drained it. So as it was bubbling it just collected kind of a little water which were I was considering as being chemical and I just exported it via the bucket. That's some of the water that I exported from the tank. So this skimmer is working back in action right now. Very happy with that. Uh, I had carbon all over the tank here. You can see I still have some underneath my skimmer. It's kind of just uh, like rubble sand and whatnot underneath there. And uh, for the most part, let's say you can see I'm still getting some uh, carbon. Some, uh, some activated carbon being collected on the filter floss. I got majority of it out here out of the refugium. There's tons of it all over inside the refugium. So everything's back in action. Everything is working. Uh, my salt level is definitely low. That's why I uh, just picked up some more salt and I got to do another water change. So I got a few things to do. Got to go pick up my son from school. And um, it's actually my other son's birthday today. He's turning nine. So... I got a few things to do guys ahead of me still, so just stay with me, Leo Pozzo TV, thanks very much for tuning in guys, I definitely appreciate all the help for everyone that's been helping out and uh, suggesting and sticking with me through this, um, it is what it is guys, you know what, it could have been a lot worse, like again, for what has been dosed to the tank with the kids, dosed to the tank and added for chemical wise, I'm very happy that there are still, uh, you know, they're healthy, my kids, they didn't get, uh, you know, in their eyes or drink it or get it in their mouth. So, you know, I look after that. I'm very happy that they're, uh, they're all okay. That's the main thing. I lost some corals. All the fish are still alive for the most part. Um, it's still going to be a, just a waiting game, guys, to see how everything goes. And uh, just play it by ear. I might, uh, I don't know, I'm going to see what's going on. I might have to re or do some work or whatever so you guys definitely want to stay tuned I have lots of projects are ready to go I have um, a few videos that needed to be uploaded already before this but this kind of happened so that's it I'm just bringing it to you guys live Leo Potzel. I just wanted to show you guys the uh, what's going on update of the tank and uh, you know what I'm doing to recover let me know what you guys think I should do with the uh, anemone kind of shriveling up there and not really making it all the uh, SPS, all this dead SPS Montipora, like, like what do I do? Just remove this whole boulder of live rock here, which is probably at least a good 10 to 15 pounds, I'm assuming. Um, you know, like what do I do? Like this piece right here is at least a good 25 pounds, give or take this piece of live rock. And, uh, you know, even the stuff on the back glass, like leave it on the back glass. Do I scrape it off? You know, what do I do, man? Like, that's a calcium-based uh, coral growing and mounted on the glass there. Even on the overflow box here. You know, I guess eventually it'll all kind of, uh, you know, new stuff will grow on it, right? But right now I'm not too happy. It is what it is, guys. Thank you so much. I apologize about the uh, not the best video quality, but it is what it is, guys. Leo Pozzo, go ahead and subscribe right now. Thank you very much for everyone for helping out and subscribing and for supporting the channel, commenting, giving your feedback and all your support. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. You know I'll keep you guys updated.